Hello, YTPC, YouTube Pipe Community. I am Professor Pipe Smoker, and I am here today smoking this lovely pipe. I'm going to tell you in a second what's in this pipe, but first I just want to give a huge shout out to Missouri Meerschaum. This is the Diplomat pipe that I own right here, and this smokes like a dream. But do, can we expect anything else from a Missouri Meerschaum? I mean, come on. I'm not sponsored by them, so don't worry. Also, I'm enjoying a very nice, lovely cup of coffee brought to you by Beyond Van Gogh. If you haven't been to this, this thing is amazing. Basically, what they do is they take Van Gogh paintings and they project them all around the room. And it is a total Van Gogh immersive experience for the entire family it everybody will enjoy it. it it was a it was one of the coolest things i have seen in a while now let's talk about what am i smoking right now so here's a story for you the other day i was working in my studio and i was cleaning everything up and i was sweeping stuff and my arm hit my canning jar filled with Lane 1Q. The canning jar hit the floor and it cracked. Now, that normally would not be a problem because I keep other canning jars around. But I had just gotten done packing the rest of the canning jars that I own with other tobaccos. Tobaccos that I plan on reviewing, and I had no more room. I had no more canning jars, and I definitely was not going to allow my lane to get super dried out and ruined. So what I did is my wife, over the Christmas holiday, had bought me three tins of Molta Dolce. And one of the tins that I have, uh, the ones that I have, they're not all filled, so... I took a couple of tins, combined them, and then I had like half a tin left, and I took my lane, which was about what would fill the rest of that tin, so I did a 50-50 blend between Molta Dolce and Lane 1Q. How did that turn out, Lane 1Q and Molta Dolce? Well, I'm happy to say that that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. <laughs> so let me talk about this first. Let me, um, let me, I'm going to give you a little background on Molta Dolce. Molta Dolce is a Sutliff private stock that is a tobacco that has vanilla, caramel, and honey as a blend. And it is an absolute delight to smoke. The taste is like a dessert of just flavors in your mouth. The smell is like sweet incense coming out of your pipe. It is a very, very delightful aromatic. And it will make a room just smell amazing. It tastes amazing. It is just a great blend. So when I mixed the one, uh, the Lane One Q with the Molto Dolce, and I was like, I think this is going to work out because Lane One Q tastes really good with all these blends. You can put it with cherry, you can put it with vanilla, you can put it with chocolate, you can put it with like all these other blends, and it plays well with others. Like there's just something about that blend that just plays really well with everything else. So I decided to put it together. And then smoke it. And what a pleasant surprise this has been, honestly. So 
the first thing about Molto Dolce is when you pack a pipe with Molto Dolce, the Molto Dolce actually snap crackles and pops almost like Rice Krispies in your pipe. It's really delightful. It's got this really cool kind of snapping here and there, and that's from, you know, the caramel and the honey and the sugars that are heating up within the pipe. The first thing that I noticed with um, this blend now with one Q, lane one Q with Molto Dolce, 50-50 blend, like a perfect blend of both together, 50-50, is that it no longer snaps, crackles, and pops anymore. <laughs> I kind of miss that personally, but there's other things besides that that happen with this blend in a good way. So the first thing that I noticed is that the tin note goes from when you have just Molto Dolce by itself, it's really a very sweet tin note, really sweet. When you mix in the 1A, it does exactly what you think it's going to do. It actually tones down the tin note, but it's still, it it almost to perfection. I can't explain it more than that, where it just smooths out that smell. So that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing that I, that I noticed was when I started smoking it, because the Lane 1Q is not an aromatic um, tobacco, it actually burns better in the pipe. So if you don't dry out Molto Dolce, and all you know that I am notorious for not drying out anything that I smoke, if you don't dry it out and you put the one Q with the Molto Dolce, it literally helps it smoke better because we know that the one Q is not a very uh, overly moist tobacco, but the Molto Dolce actually kind of is. So there's a balance that happens even within the blend. So, let's talk about the flavor. You only lose a little bit of the sweetness of the flavor, but it's replaced by the naturalness of the 1A. Now, the 1A and Molto Dolce, they are very mild. I mean, on my scale, they're very mild tobacco. They're really a nice kind of nightcap. They're really a kind of tobacco that you could smoke... Um, even if you want to in the morning, I don't really, I wouldn't smoke this in the morning. I would smoke this more like evening as, you know, at the end of the day kind of blend. That would be my own personal take on it. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Currently it's uh, about 7, 7.30 p.m. And I am just loving this. I am smoking this after dinner. It's an after dinner smoke. I'm in my studio. I'm going to do some work in here. And I'm just really enjoying the taste and the blend and the mildness of it. Now, let's talk about room note. The room note on this is absolutely delightful. Because, once again, you get the Molta Dolce room note. Mix beautifully in harmony with the the one Q, the lane. It, it's like it has this kind of really very nice and evened out smell. Now I love the smell of Molto Dolce because I'm a really big sweets kind of guy. You can tell by my size. Really kind of like the sweets. So it has that sweet smell, but then it also has that really nice natural tone too. So what, what I've been noticing is that the initial puff has this sweetness with a lingering natural smell at the on the back side. This is the kind of room note that you could get away with smoking around non-smokers. Here's my take on this. There are blends that you can get away with that the way you get away with it is with other smokers. So if you're part of a pipe group or it's all men or, you know, men or women, I, I actually do prefer just smoking pipe, all men. I'm married. I don't, you know, 
So I, I, I love my wife, but sometimes I just want guy time. There are blends that are good for those scenarios. And then there are blends that are actually very good for if you're, say, out on the porch or there's other people and not really smokers or anything um, that are going to be good for a room with non-smokers or a wife that doesn't smoke. Molta Dolce and this blend with the 1Q is that scenario perfectly. Second scenario, being around people. They will find that the room note is pleasant, that it has a kind of um, sugary, bake, baking kind of smell to it. And there may just be a little bit of, uh, there'll be a little bit of the natural kind of 1Q smell mingled into that, but it's not overwhelming. I think I am very pleasantly surprised with how this blend turned out, blending those two together. And I'm actually glad I did it because I can very easily now see this becoming one of my go-to smokes. Since I am an aromatic guy, a lot. And, but I do smoke other stuff. But the other day I was actually smoking the Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to do a review on that. Um, but I normally gravitate towards aromatics. Because of, I got a sweet tooth. I just got a sweet tooth. That's all I got to say. It, you know, <laughs> it, it's pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> So I would give this um, tin note. I would say it's a four solid five easily. Room note four non-smokers is definitely a solid four, uh, maybe three and a half. For me, it's a solid five. I think it's a great room note. The taste on this for me is a solid four, four and a half. The tin note is a solid five. It wow, Molta Dolce in general should be a solid five on tin note. It just smells great, but this really, really enhanced it as well. It, it's really a great, great room note and tin note and smoke. Quality of smoke with the one Q, same thing, solid four on that. Um, I did notice uh, a little bit that as it's getting down, it needs a, um, maybe a little bit more lighting, but not too bad. The The pipe is, is actually packed really well. And the actual pipe is smoking really well, as you would expect from a Missouri Meerschaum. So, great blend. Once again, Sutliff Private Stock, Molta Dolce, 50-50 with a Lane 1Q. Wonderful blend, wonderful blend, wonderful smoke through my Missouri Meerschaum Diplomat pipe. Now I'm going to warn you all on one thing. If you buy Molta Dolce by itself and smoke it, it is a wonderful smoke. But do not smoke it too fast because that tongue bite could creep up and bite you hard. And the reason for that is the sugar content in Molta Dolce. When you have both caramel and honey, there's a tremendous amount of sugar. And sugar burns hot and it can bite your tongue. How I combat that a little bit. Uh, actually quite a bit, is I will get a pipe that I know smell, uh, smokes cooler. And there are two pipes that are kind of my go-to cooler smoking pipes. 
The first is this one. Look at the wall on that. My Missouri Meerschaum. This actually smokes very nice. Smokes cool. And the other one is my Stanwell Sterling 63. This really smokes cool as well. Now the reason why I'm not using this is because I've smoked that um, and I'm letting that rest. For now, it's getting its vacation. This is delightful. Guys, this is delightful. Mm. So good. The pipe life is just so good. In the few minutes that I have left, because I don't want to run this video too long, I want to talk about this company, Missouri Meerschaum, and why it's important to support. I am all for, by the way, buying Barracinis and Savinelli's and Dunhill's and John Bulls and Peterson's. You know, I'm not I'm not a stickler on any of that, and I have all of those. But if I had to tell you the pipes that I own the most of right now, number one are Missouri Meerschaums. I own the most Missouri Meerschaums of any other pipe that I have. And there is a reason, like there always is. First of all, they are an American company, and they are a staple in the pipe community. I cannot imagine pipe smoking being without Missouri Meerschaum. They go, I mean, they are married, you know, together, like me and my wife. Those two. Pipe smoking, Missouri Meerschaum, both together. They belong together. These are American classics. They've been around forever. They are a staple in this country, and we need to support them. And here's the other thing. You need to support them because they're not that expensive. They are extremely inexpensive, but they smoke like dreams. I have never gotten a defective Missouri Meerschaum pipe ever. And I own quite a few of these. I keep new ones around that if I have friends I want to try pipe smoking, I give them the Meerschaum. And the reason for that is because they're inexpensive and they are such a great smoke that a first-time smoker will find so much pleasure in smoking a Meerschaum pipe, a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. Second of all, why to support this company is because in our country, in the United States, our beautiful and wonderful, stupid government has decided to go at war with companies like this. Regulation and all kinds of things to try to shut them down because somebody said that pipe smoking and tobacco smoking is harmful to the general public. Now, I agree 100% with cigarette smoking. There's accelerants, there's extra nicotine. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I was um, just interrupted by my wife, which is a great interruption. Anytime she wants to interrupt, she can. Because it's my wife. What? Something just clicked behind me. Don't know what it was. Got a ghost in my studio. Maybe it's the Holy Ghost. Whoa. Um, big Tobacco was under attack and is under attack by our government. And it's basically, they're going after cigarettes. And we know that cigarettes have accelerants and they have nicotine built into them. And they have, you know, a lot of chemicals that are in cigarettes that are very addictive. They get people addicted and then they turn, you know, up their intake and there is carcinogens within cigarettes and other things. Now, I don't know. It's almost like when the government decides to go after one thing, they go the, on the entire uh, attack against the entire industry, which is companies like this. They go on the attack with even um, indie guys like Dr. Harrelson from The Pipe Cottage and other people that are actually trying to sell tobacco product. So instead of just going after the one thing that would cause everybody harm, 
they decide to nuke the entire industry. Pretty typical for our government, who are probably the largest bullies in the entire universe. I am all American. I am not all government. And, you know, government is supposed to work for the people. We don't work for them, but they have somehow flipped that around to apparently where we're all under scrutiny by them and they dictate to the whole United States. So within the tobacco industry, they did that. They bullied and bullied and bullied and regulated and passed laws and bullied more and regulated more and passed more laws. And in New York State, I don't smoke cigarettes. But dear Lord, if I did, I'd be broke. What I also find very interesting, and this is just a little rabbit trail that I'm going to mention real quick, is that you don't see the government going after the pharmaceutical companies that created an opioid epidemic. They kind of did, but they, they just really lightly slapped them on the wrist and go, don't do that again. And also, could you write me a check for my next campaign? That's kind of what they do. So the lobbyists have really gotten uh, their way in Washington from the pharmaceutical companies. And we know if you look into it, that pharmaceutical companies spend the most money of any industry lobbying uh, governor, government officials. There we go. That industry has created more deaths in the opioid epidemic in one small shot than if you took the entire pipe tobacco industry and cigar industry together, which is almost like zero, by the way. But cigarettes, yeah, they have caused problems. But let me tell you, what is worse, that kind of addiction or addicted to opioids? I'm going to tell you, it's opioid addiction. That's the one that's going to kill you faster, quicker than anything, including cigarettes. But somewhere along the line, the government got into their stupid noggins that going after the entire tobacco industry was a good idea. And so now it's like jumping through hoops and circus hoops to do anything with tobacco. And, and if you don't believe me, just go over to the Pipe Cottage site and look at the battle that Dr. Harrelson is fighting right now. It is big. So we need to support companies like this, but we need to support each other, including brick and mortar stores, including mom and pop shops. Because if we want this great American tradition to keep going, it's going to be our funding that keeps it going, see? And I don't know about any of you, but I don't ever want this to die out. Because this is just a great American tradition before even anyone arrived in America with a native Americans, pipe smoking has always been a tradition. And a healthy one. So now we have laws, even in New York, where you can smoke marijuana, you can carry two ounce bag of marijuana, you can gift it to a friend. You know, so we're lightening up all the marijuana stuff. But God forbid if you or I smoke a pipe. Let's alert the insurance companies. Let's tell them they're going to die young. But what I want to bring up of why to support this is that in 1964, the Attorney General's office, you can look this up. This is all truth. 1964, Attorney General, not Attorney General, Surgeon General's office actually did a study on pipe smoking and cigar smoking. And this is what they found. Zero harmful effects and they actually released a statement that said those who smoke pipe and cigars outlive those who don't. I know the reason why, as we should, because this distresses you. And stress is a bigger killer than this will ever kill you. Stress is going to take you to your grave early. Stress is going to bring about blood pressure. And if you don't know about blood pressure, if you have high blood pressure, it means that your body is pumping blood and just slamming the blood into your organs. 
It brings about kidney failure, brings about stroke, brings about heart attacks. It does way more damage, stress does, than this will ever bring about. This de-stresses, life stresses, and that's why people who take their time to slow down and smoke a pipe and relax live longer, according to the Surgeon General's report and study. They found no harmful effect of pure tobacco, and <clears throat> they found no harmful effect in the food grade, by the way, um, flavorings within tobacco, food grade. These are not artificial flavors. These are food grade flavorings, so they're all natural. Tobacco is a natural leaf that is growing. Yes, it does have nicotine, but I've never met anybody at least in my lifetime so far, that's been addicted to nicotine from a pipe. I have met addicted people who smoke cigarettes. So all this to say, this is the reason why we want to support all American companies. We want these companies to be around so that we can keep tradition going that we can support an industry that actually creates healthy living and they're an American company. Now, I have no problem supporting Savinelli. I have no problem supporting, supporting Peterson. I have no problem supporting Barracini's or Italian manufacturers. But my number one that I'm going to support are, is a company like this. Missouri Meerschaum, an American classic, an American staple. They smoke well. It isn't like they're crap. Like, buy these through the Chinese. Man, you're going to get the crappiest po smoke you've ever had in your entire life. Missouri Meerschaum is quality, and yet the price is so reasonable, too. What I also love about the Meerschaums is that they grow the corn specifically for their pipes. And they don't waste it. They actually sell the corn for feed and products. So they're not a wasteful company. They, But they let these cure, you know, within like a bin. And then they shave them down. And then they sell the grains. And what a wonderful company. Seriously, what a wonderful company. So it's important, especially in this country, if you are from the United States, to support United States companies like this. This is not going to break your bank like a Dunhill. Now, if anyone wants to give me a Dunhill, I'm open to that. I saw one the other day for $5,300. Said not in my lifetime at this moment. Because even if I had $5,300, I'd be buying a piece of gear for my studio and probably one of the nicer mics that's sitting behind me up here for my collection. I can smoke... A $15 pipe and get a lot of joy out of it. I mean, a lot of joy out of this pipe. I am right now. I am so freaking content right now smoking this. So that's what I want to tell you all. Support each other online. Brad the Bearded um, Piper. Scott. The Pipe Cottage. George Bruno. There are many more. Spurgeon Piper. support each other. Not only do you support each other, but you can learn a ton because everybody has such a unique perspective on this beautiful hobby. The other day I was watching um, The Pipe Cottage and that was such a relaxing experience I literally fell asleep into a deep sleep. It wasn't boring at all. It was such a great video, but it was just so soothing. I was just like boom, gone. So support each other and support this beautiful industry and this beautiful hobby. Support your local tobacconists. Support your local shops. Um, I don't have anything um, bad to say about online shops either. Pipe Nook, Pipes and Cigars, if that's your thing, man. At least you're supporting this industry. I just happen to like to support more mom and pop and smaller operations uh, that's kind of where my heart's at because I am an independent studio as well recording studio 
I'm not funded by the majors. I don't have any backing. I have to create my own work. And all these people are, are hard workers. I also want to tell you, please support the Pipe Cottage because he's getting ready to do a, a brick and mortar store. And we really want that for where he's at. He's got voice and he has influence in the pipe community. And we need to support people like that. So, my Molta Dolce Lane 1 Q blend. Absolutely thumbs up. Absolutely a joy. This Missouri Meerschaum Diplomat. Oh my god, I love this pipe. And I, I love all my pipes. There are some that I'm more um, geared to loving more. And definitely the Missouri Meerschaum line. I just love the Great American Classic. So take care of yourself. Relax. Enjoy a pipe. Live long and prosper. And I'll see you guys on the next video.